Okay, so we're going to have a look at the Taylor series for 1 over z plus 1 squared at the point where z equals 0. Now there's an interesting pattern in this Taylor series and I did a video recently on residue theorem where this Taylor series was required. Um, so I just want to show you now how the pattern is formed in this Taylor series. So Taylor series is formula as n equals 0 to infinity with the nth derivative evaluated at the point a in this case our z equals zero is our a divide that by n factorial and then what we want then is z minus a to the power of n that's our Taylor series here so straight away we need to go straight into calculating these derivatives that's always a good place to start so we've got our values for n, we've got our derivative, so f of uh, n, and then I've got our value at f of n, basically our nth derivative evaluated at this point. And these are the three columns that we're going to be interested in here. So using this formula, when n equals zero, function, 1 over z plus 1 squared, I'm going to write that as z plus 1 to the minus 2. So I'm then going to write that on this side in our normal form. It's easier to do the derivative when we've got z plus 1 to the minus 2, I just prefer it. And evaluate it at n equals 0, plugging 0 to this, this term on the bottom is going to be 1 squared, 1 divided by 1 squared is just going to be positive 1. So that's our first term. So when n equals 1, which is going to be our second term, first of all, let's take the derivative. So the minus 2 comes out front. Multiplied by the chain rule uh, of the inside, which is just going to be 1. So we don't need to adjust this at all. And then subtract 1 from the power. So z plus 1 to the minus 3. Writing that on this side, we've got minus 2, z plus 1 to the power of 3. So again, this term here is always going to be 1, so that's just going to be 1. So we're always going to be left with here, evaluating at the point 0, is just whatever's in the numerator. So that's now minus 2. Okay, next term, n equals 2. Next derivative, minus 3 comes out front, so minus 3 times minus 2 is 6, and then z plus 1, chain rule we've already discussed, so we won't worry about that now, and then just drop 1 off the power. So then that just leaves us with 6 over z plus 1 to the power of 4, which then just, we just need the number here, which in the numerator, so that's going to give us positive 6. So already we can see this is going to be an alternating series. So now n equals 3. Let's say again, minus 4 times 6. That's going to give us minus 24. Z plus 1. And then minus 5. OK. So we're not going to need to keep writing these out all the time because we know that the coefficient in the numerator is going to be the answer to the value of the derivative of 0. So then this is going to be minus 24 and then for n equals 4 minus 5 times minus 24 is 120 and then usual business minus 6 then our value is going to be this coefficient here which is 120 and then just the last one just so as you can see the pattern forming at the point 5 uh, our fifth term sorry uh, our fifth term minus 6 120 is minus 720 z plus 1 to the power of minus 7 and evaluated at 0 that's just going to be the coefficient at the front there minus 720. Okay so looks like there's a pattern forming in the values of these coefficients here for the derivative they all seem to be linked to the factorial function so here we've got minus 2 which is 2 factorial with the minus sign in front 
So we just ignore the sine for the moment. So we'll just take the absolute value of these coefficients for now. Three factorial here, but this one here is four factorial. This one is four, but this one here is five factorial. And this one is five, meaning that we're six factorial. So it seems like the value of this is going to be the factorial of n plus one, and then the sine uh, alternating. So we're going to say here that our nth derivative is going to be n plus 1 factorial. So that's where we get to this number. And then we have to multiply that by minus 1 to the power of n. That's a good old fashioned uh, nth derivative. And then we just multiply that by z plus 1 to the power of, well, so here we've got minus 7, minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2. So the series starts at minus 2. So we've got to the power of minus 2 plus n. So the fifth one, 2 plus 5 is 7. It's going to be minus 7. So that will prove that one. z plus 1 to the power of minus 7. And then n plus 1 factorial. So at 5, we've got 6. So 6 factorial is 720. And then minus 1 to the power of 5, that's minus 1. So we end up with minus 720. OK, now just to finish off, we're just going to write in here now our Taylor series and let's just see the pattern in the Taylor series. We've already worked out that there's a pattern here in the derivative and that's write the Taylor series. So n equals zero using this formula here. So this, these values here have already been calculated for us. So I'm just going to put them isolated in a nice little box there so we can see that. This is just going to be said to the power of n because a is zero. And then n factorial, that's pretty straightforward for us. So the first term, so first term, n equals zero. So this number here is going to be one divided by n factorial, which is zero. And then z to the n is how it's multiplied. So then this is going to give us 1 over 0 factorial is 1, so let's just write a 1 in brackets there, times z to the n. So that's just going to be, uh, sorry, z to the n, to the, which is z to the power of 0, which is just going to give us 1, and that's a positive 1. Okay, so second term, n equals 1. So we've got our coefficient here, minus 2, so plug in the minus 2 n is 1, so 1 factorial, and then z to the power of n. I'm just going to write n straight in here, so I'll just put 1. So z to the power of 1. So that then equals minus 2 divided by 1 factorial is minus 2, z to the power of 1. So I'll just leave that as a z. Third term, n equals 2. n equals 2 got positive 6 divided by 1 factorial, uh, divided by, sorry, 2 factorial, our n is 2, and our value of that is 2, and then z to the power of 2, so then that's going to give us 6 divided by 2 is 3, so that's a positive 3z squared. Straight into the fourth term, n equals 3, n equals 3, we've got minus 24 as our coefficient, n factorial, that's 3 factorial, which gives us 6, and then z to the power of n, which is 3. So now 24 divided by 6 is 4, and with the minus sign, that gives us minus 4z to the cubed. So we can see a pattern forming now in our Taylor series. This absolute value is increased by 1 every time, and this power goes from 0 to 1, sorry, from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3, and so on. Just keep checking. Fifth term. Now I'm expecting here um, a positive 5 and a z to the 4. Let's see what happens. Fourth term, 120 is the coefficient, divided by 4 factorial. 
and is 4 and a z to the power of 4 4 factorial is 24 120 divided by 24 is 5 so yep we was right 5z to the power of 4 and the last term we're using our numbers and our derivatives 6 term n equals 5 the coefficient is minus 720 divided by 5 factorial which is 120 and then we got z to the power of 5 so 720 divided by 126 and then the minus sign minus 6 z to the power of 5 okay so now we're just going to prove our Taylor series with this pattern here so I'm going to write it down quickly now as an alternating series so we've got plus and minus so when n equals zero we've got a positive so basically what we need first term is just put this in a nice little box we have minus one to the power of n so when n is one we want a negative numbers so that's minus one to the n that's classic alternating series numbers we've got z to the power of n so we've got we could put a one there if you wanted so that's our terms there, and obviously z to the power of zero is one, which is why you don't see any z there. So we've got z to the n. Divide all that by n factorial. And then this coefficient here, we need, don't need to regard the sign, we've taken care of that already. This number here is the same as this one here, which is n plus one factorial divided by n factorial. So now what we need here is n plus 1 factorial. Now a quick little bit of algebra on this. This is nothing more than minus 1 to the n, z to the n, n plus 1 times n factorial. Just fitted that in there just nicely. Divided by n factorial. Now using algebra we know we can cancel out these n factorials now. So now that just leaves us now, our Taylor series is basically minus 1 to the power of n times z to the n times n plus 1. And there we can see how the pattern of our Taylor series comes about, where this number is always going to be 1 more than the power. And there we go. And then obviously this takes care of our alternating signs. Okay.